All right. Tom Vallone, I hardly know where to start with him in terms of introducing him. He's been around this field for a long time. He used to do a lot of different things, and he still does do a lot of different things. And it's really great to have him around because he's one of our greatest coordinators and correlators of information. He's president of Integrity Research Institute. He also edits the journal Future Energy and E! News. So he makes a great contribution now. In the past, he's invented several instruments. As a matter of fact, my first uh, magnetic field meter that I used in my consulting practice I bought from him, and it was a very good meter. Really got a lot out of that for several years. And he's also invented a dental vapor ionizer and a static field gauss meter, ELF spectrum analyzers, and several other things. He's taught at the uh, State University of New York uh, Erie Community College, and he's also uh, taught a number of other courses all over the place. But uh, with his varied background, he's become one of our best speakers and one of the greatest experts on advanced technology in the world today. Tom Vallone. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and to address you today about a very important topic. I'm hoping this is not too loud and we're getting feedback. Everyone can hear me okay? Good, good. I can tell by your silence that you're awake and alive and <laughs> paying attention. Today we have um, a con confluence of a lot of different encouraging signs that what I'm about to present to you has great significance. Um, as Michael pointed out, some of us have been pursuing the field of alternative and emerging energy sciences for decades. Uh, I literally started in 1980 pursuing the Gravitational Field Conference in Germany. And from there, it became a habit. <laughs> Every year, I'd look for something to give a talk at and learn more and correspond and write and so forth. So. Uh, essentially, after 24 years at this, um, you kind of wonder if the word free energy is ever going to become acceptable or basically still shunned by the mainstream scientists and, of course, the government. Um, but uh, as I pointed out, we just today, uh, this week, as a matter of fact, received some encouraging signs. And I will cite other ones in my presentation as well, but this one's hot off the press. Los Angeles Times, July 25th, 2004. The title of the article is Mining the Imagination for New Energy. Scientists Call for a Research Blitz Targeting Extreme Possibilities. Now, doesn't that sound like a fringe uh, article from Extraordinary Technology? No, it's in the LA Times. <laughs> And, um, and, and just to paraphrase one of the, actually to quote one of the um, leading paragraph sentences, which criticizes both the candidates, presidential candidates, for just looking at standard alternatives. <clears throat> They're writing in the journal Science, and Caldera and 17 other eminent American and Canadian scientists conclude that the only hope for solving the world's looming energy store shortage is to consider things we've barely imagined. Hello, people are waking up. This is wonderful. <laughs> they propose a research blitz of previously unimagined proportions, far beyond what any politician is currently suggesting, in search of entirely new carbon-free technologies. I think we should give them a hand if they were here, you know. <laughs> but see what desperation does? You know, they start to look for things that perhaps might last more than 100 years. And, of course, as we know, the... Um, the oil industry is just about a hundred year uh, lifespan. That's all we can expect, if we, if at all. <clears throat> so let me give you another um, uh, warm up to the uh, topic at hand. And to reference this, we've also had a presentation, I personally have given one called Understanding Zero Point Energy, that's been actually reproduced as an article in many places, uh, Infinite Energy Magazine, Explorer, uh, and so forth. And that was in 1999, so that uh, video uh, is also available to introduce zero-point energy. Now, what is zero-point energy? I'm going to show you a different, many different de definitions, but let me quote Nikola Tesla. Many of us in this crowd know who Nikola Tesla was, and 
uh, celebrate his greatness. Well, in 1891, the world's greatest electrical futurist, Nikola Tesla, stated, quote, throughout space, there is energy. Is this energy static or kinetic? If static, our hopes are in vain. If kinetic, and we know for certain it is, then it is a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very wheelwork of nature. Many generations may pass, but in time our machinery will be driven by a power obtainable at any point in the universe. And so there, ladies and gentlemen, is the basic birth of the concept of zero-point energy. Tesla was so intuitive that he basically perceived the existence of something that was just barely being discovered in the fringes of scientific literature. So let's begin our uh, slides and start to discuss more in detail the actual definitions and um, information that will give you a, a basic understanding and also, I hope, an excitement for this field. For years, I felt zero-point energy was something unimaginable, beyond comprehension, and the numbers were too large to really appreciate. <coughs> Well, as a matter of fact, uh, NASA has helped us in this case because they're pointing out on this website that zero-point energy essentially has random electromagnetic waves, and this is the first very important part to it, that if you realize vacuum fluctuations are real, you've come away from this lecture with a whole new understanding of reality. Vacuum fluctuations are real. For years, they were called virtual, and they still are in the textbooks. They're only virtual particles, therefore they have no effects. <laughs> and that's what mainstream science always thought. But the enormous energy density, which is still a number that's been bantered around like crazy, depending on who you listen to, it's 10 to the umpteenth joules per cubic uh, meter. And, uh, and as I say, the ex exponent is debatable. It's always less than 100, but it's more than 10 to the 10th. And, uh, and of course, the fascinating part, which Harold Putoff has contributed to, is that gravity and inertia have now been fairly theoretically proven to be related directly to zero-point energy, the actual field effects of zero-point. When you go around a curve, you're actually bumping into zero-point particles, and that's why you feel the inertial effects. Um, and gravity is also the, the similar effect. And, of course, the uh, debatable part of it is whether or not there's an energy source available. Uh, many people, like Robert Forward, went to his grave believing there was no energy source available. Um, however, today we're seeing otherwise. And, of course, the biggest evidence, which there's lots of literature in regards to this, is the Casimir effect. This diagram actually is one of the best, and, in fact, we have another one, too. But notice the uh, wavelengths here. We're basically showing, which this perhaps does not do justice to, the fact that as you place two parallel plates close together, um, and they can be other shapes besides parallel, you find that you start excluding some frequencies. And as you exclude some frequencies from that inner cavity, the outer cavity now has more and more um, pressure, literal physical pressure. And so the Casimir force is a real force that has sizable pounds per square centimeter uh, pressure that's real. <clears throat> now, the quantum vacuum, which is a good name for what we're surrounded by, even in our bodies, we're surrounded by what's called the quantum vacuum. What perhaps is the most important conclusion of the scientific uh, community is that zero-point energy is not conserved. Hello, I just said something remarkably incredible. 